Um, number seven, like look at places you've missed things before. Um, there are places that your mind just doesn't see. For the same reason your reports like have errors like in them. Even if you carefully read them, there are areas that your mind just doesn't see. It just erases them, just interpolates normal. You see, you know, reduced effusion and your mind just is like, oh yeah, reduced effusion, like I got it. Uh, it's the same thing like on, on when you miss things on studies, like you tend to miss things in the same places. Uh, we had a chest attending. Uh, we had some great attendings, like they had handouts on how to make radiology reports handouts on how to read a chest radiograph is this like hand drawing it's like pretty pretty freaking hilarious and he says you know 85 percent of things on a chest x-ray are missed in these areas i don't know where he got this statistic i think it's probably totally made up but the concept <laughs> is the concept is is correct and he, what did he call these he called these lawyer zones because those are the areas where something is likely to get you sued and you better look at it again and uh we kind of laughed at this guy because he's kind of funny and like but, but in reality, like the more I think about it, like the concept is, is right. Like there are areas where you're likely to miss things and you need to compensate like in those areas. And uh, I would encourage you guys to like keep a log of like the things that you miss. Like when you get these, I mean, you get these emails or whatever, when we do the overreads and uh, go back and look at those cases, like keep track of them, sort of keep them. Because if you miss something there before, there's a very good chance you will miss it again and uh, look at those places again, okay? Uh, the other thing is if you have a log of this and you can give some lecture like this and like have some uh, hilarious anecdotes. Uh, here, one slice. There's a hyperdensity in the intrapeduncular cistern here. Okay, this is the only evidence that this patient had any intracranial hemorrhage. Okay, this is like a favorite place where you can miss things where uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage likes to, likes to hide out. And, uh, I was always amazed, like when the faculty would see that, I was like, man, how, how did you catch that tiny dot of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Then I realized that it, that's actually just a common location for subarachnoid hemorrhage to pool. Um, here, let's see. Posterior fossa, I don't know, it always looks terrible, always has like tons of artifact. There's like something going on here. This is not right, like what's this blob? I mean, right, you're like, oh, you know, it's just too dense, like I don't know. When you see that, they need a follow-up study. Look at the posterior fossa. It's like a terrible place for things to hide. This was a trauma patient. Uh, this is a contusion, okay, a hemorrhagic contusion. I'm gonna show you the MR, you'll be appalled. Like, it looks terrible. There's all of this blood product susceptibility, all of this flare. This is two days later, it's like become more obvious. Uh, be aware of that, like look at the posterior fossa. Okay, that's a lawyer's zone for a neuroradiologist. Um, other common areas like where I miss things like the anterior temporal lobes, again, for the same reason, like uh, the, the artifact from the skull base is a lot. Look at those on, use the coronals, use the sagittal reformats to like troubleshoot those areas. Frame and magnum, upper cervical spine, cause they're kind of on the edge of the image. Like maybe you just don't even look there. Pituitary, man, if I had a nickel for like every like thing I've missed, like in the pituitary on like a routine, like brain CT. You can miss like big adenomas. You can miss erosive lesions of the clivus because your brain just does not look there. 